our final OO competitor, Micah Diaz. strengthens our lungs and our muscles. 
And in addition to those benefits, they relax our bodies, making it easier to get better sleep at night. And laughter is also a workout, which means that sitting and laughing are almost as good as moving. <laughs> According to HealthGuide.org, 10 to 15 minutes of laughter a day can burn 40 calories. <laughs> which may not seem like much if you think about it. But if you laugh for an hour a day, you can burn up to 240 calories. And every little bit helps. <laughs> My favorite thing about humor is that having a good sense of humor is captivating. Studies show that women find humor attractive, which I hope is true because I need all the help I can get. <laughs> but more than that, humorthatworks.com states, and I quote, humor connects us with others. Positive sounds such as laughter or a triumphant woo can trigger a response in the listener's brain. The response is automatic and helps us interact socially by priming us to smile or laugh thereby connecting us with the other person, end quote. Also, according to Laughter Online University, laughter improves cooperation and communication with others, and not just between family and friends, but with coworkers, enhancing productivity. Plus, if you're humorous, you might be easier to work with. I said might. <laughs> now, humor and laughter don't only improve our physical health, they improve our mental health as well. According to the Nebraska Department of Veterans Affairs, 5.2 million people are diagnosed with PTSD each year. A post-traumatic stress disorder is a disorder that affects our brains, and you may be diagnosed with it during or after traumatizing experiences. Also, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, every year, 18.1% of Americans are diagnosed with serious levels of depression. Now, depression is one of the leading causes of suicide, and a distressing fact is that according to the World Health Organization, 40 suicides take place every second. People are dying because they feel hopeless and they have no desire to continue living. But there is hope, and it can be found in humor. Clinically depressed people and those diagnosed with PTSD can receive humor therapy. They can watch comedians, read humor columns, listen to humorous podcasts, and they can laugh. The laughter decreases stress levels and has positive effects on their brains. So, as we can see, laughter and humor aid in healing the brokenhearted. There is even a Jewish proverb that states, As soap is to the body, so laughter is to the soul. Now, up to now, we've looked at humor's effects on our physical bodies, but what does it do to the body of Christ? Well, humor is great for fellowship, and not just between churches, other friends and family, or with coworkers, but it gives us a better understanding of who God is. Now, I believe that God has a great sense of humor, and I do so for three reasons. One, we as humans were created in His likeness, meaning if we can be funny, then He absolutely must be funny as well. Two, he created the toddler. <laughs> you know, those miniature humans who insist on telling you how to drive, but still don't know how to wipe. <laughs> and three, the platypus. <laughs> I mean, think about it. He created humorous things and the ability to laugh at them. As comedian Tim Hawkins says, and I quote, one of the reasons we know God loves us is because there's laughter, end quote. And God knows that laughter heals. In Luke 6, 21, Jesus says, Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. We are told not to fear, not to worry, but instead to cast our anxiety on God. And a great way to do this is to laugh. Now, I, I understand that humor can be used for evil. It can be inappropriate and ungodly. It can hurt our feelings. And we need to be careful at what we laugh at and who we laugh at. But humor can be put into action to advance God's kingdom. There are many big names in comedic ministry, and if you look for some, they won't be hard to find. Also, congregations are more engaged in humorous sermons. Little kids can be taught deep theology using humor. Now, I know this because my siblings watch What's in the Bible, which teaches deep aspects of biblical theology with lighthearted humor and puppets. Because when something is funny, you'll remember it just like you'll remember this speech. <laughs> Today, we looked at the history of humor, how humor improves our health physically and mentally, and its improvements it can do on our relationship with God. 
It also improves family relations. It creates positivity. And it's my favorite lens to wear as I look at my daily life. I understand that humor is a gift from God, and it's one we should absolutely thank Him for. We were created to laugh. He makes everything for a purpose, and laughter has a great purpose, to make our lives better. I mean, Jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly, and part of that abundance is humor. And I believe we all need to laugh a lot more, especially at zoos <laughs> and toddlers. <laughs>